Hi guys, it's Mr. Sci-Fi, Mark Zickery of Space Command, and it's been a few days since I've checked in because it has been so incredibly busy. There's been so much going on. Oh uh, God, where to start? We're building the alien spaceship, we're building creatures, we're um, shooting a scene uh, on Monday with an attack on Titan by combat synthetics and gorillas and all sorts of stuff, and um, uh, that's going to be on a green screen stage at a studio in Hollywood. Uh, we're doing visual effects shots. I'm working with Dave Edison on the interior of the alien ship in, in the pilot. And uh, we're cooking along, cooking along. If you haven't seen the new version of The Hour that we posted, check it out. But make sure it's the one that I posted just a few days ago because I've posted several different versions uh, since January. Uh, I've, you know, I've been writing, uh, you know, on, this, on the Making of Space Command book, working on the 12 hours of the first season uh, in terms of scripts uh, and the prequel and the graphic novel and the novel and... Oh gosh, the radio play. Um, also creating, you know, six shows beyond that with, uh, for the Showrunners Network. So we're working on the first one, Sweet Haven, with uh, Rock Neil Bannon, creator of Farscape, and myself. And uh, many, many, many things going on. It's also Elaine's birthday today, so it's uh, it's going to be a great time had by all. And uh, and she's working on the mini series of Subversive. We're flying to England shortly to um, to get all that stuff going and. Uh, just, just tons of stuff, tons of stuff, guys. But um, what I wanted to talk to today, and also, of course, we're selling Space Command shares, and you're welcome to buy some. And uh, just call me at Mark Zickery. Call me at 323-363-1259 or email me at markzickery at gmail.com. Shares are $7,500. You get part of my um, loot <laughs> from selling Space Command. So um, I wanted to talk today about a couple things. Uh, uh, many of you know that I wrote for Babylon 5. I also developed Captain Power and Soldiers of the Future, which led directly to Babylon 5, and there I've, t I've posted videos about that. I'll talk about that a little more at some point in the future. But um, I go to the gym three times a week. We've got a trainer, and I walk for 20 minutes and run for 35. And I've recently discovered that in, in addition to listening to music and audiobooks, I can actually watch TV on my iPhone. So I've been catching up on some of the science fiction shows. And, uh, you know, initially when The Expanse aired, uh, I've read all the books. I, I really like the books. And um, so I watched the first few episodes, wasn't really taken with it, and then held off for a while and then finally came back and watched the second and third seasons, which I liked very much. And I just finished the new Expanse novel, which I also liked. And um, what I wanted to mention, so, okay, so this, the title of this uh, is, you know, Babylon 5 writer talks about how to watch Babylon 5 and The Expanse. So, uh, but I've been watching The Expanse season one uh, at the gym on my iPhone, and also I've been starting to watch Babylon 5 because although I wrote for it, uh, I never watched all of the episodes in, in order. And, uh, and for those of you who don't know, by the way, when Joe shot, Joe Straczynski shot the pilot, um, none of us were all that happy with it. It had a lot of kind of flaws and, and goofiness. And so at, at, you know, several seasons in, he was given money where he could recut the pilot and re-edit it and do, you know, various things to it to make it better. And so pro if you've ever seen the pilot, uh, you're probably watching the revised version and not the original version. So just to let you know, if you're ever curious to, um, to compare the differences between the two, I'm sure somewhere on, you know, YouTube or somewhere that original version exists and, um, and you can see it. So, um, so here's, here's, let's talk about Babylon 5 for a moment. Uh, a lot of people complain that Babylon 5 looks like shit now on big screen TVs, and it's true. And the reason is because uh, it was shot, it was really the first series using, entirely using, uh, you know, CG for the ships and for a lot of other effects. And, and while it looked great on a TV, on a 12-inch, 19-inch TV, where you couldn't stop, pause, rewind, go back, all that stuff, you know, um, VHS... Uh, machines and Betamaxes were just, you know, uh, uh, buying, being bought by people. But again, the quality was very grainy, and so even if you were watching it on videotape, it was okay. And that was the height of what computers could do at that time. It was really the first show to, to do um, visual effects in the way that they're done now, um, by and large. Now, the, here's, here's the problem. And, and also, Joe was very um, forward-thinking uh, at the time because... Um, most, almost all shows back then were shot, shot on film and they were shot in a ratio that's known as th um, four by three uh, or three by four, whatever it is. It's anyway, it's basically that square format. And Joe saw what was coming in terms of technology and the future. And so he said, no, no, we're shooting widescreen, uh, which is the way, you know, all TV shows are shot now. So as a result, if you look at old episodes of Star Trek, you know, they're, they're on that square ratio and, um, and Joe's show is on, you know, 
a widescreen ratio, so that's great. But again, then the reason why Babylon 5 doesn't look as good as it could is because Babylon 5 was not owned by Warner Brothers, it was distributed by Warner Brothers. This is also the reason why it hasn't seen uh, wide syndication or, you know, remakes and all that stuff, because it was not as profitable for Warners. And um, so, so as a result, while the show is very much needs uh, the visual effects redone, as they have been with Star Trek The Next Generation, etc., uh, where they did a new version, and even the original Star Trek did new new effects that you could choose to watch or not watch. Babylon 5 remains the cutting edge of 1990, what, three or whatever. So, um, so here's the way to watch it, where it looks great. Watch it on your iPhone. Watch it on a small screen. On a small screen, the effects still look really good. And, of course, the live elements look fine. They were shot on film. So, so don't... Don't try and watch it on 65-inch screen where you'll be where constantly the weaknesses of visual effects will be right in your face. Watch it on your iPhone, and then it will be exactly what you would like it to be, and it won't distract you. Because in many ways it was hugely ahead of its time. Joe was very impressed by Hill Street Blues and the continuing story. And Initially, uh, in television, they wanted us to write shows that were self-contained, that didn't change from episode to episode because they were going to go into syndication and they'd be shown out of order and it would be impossible for people to follow a, a long, arcing story. But then once um, uh, videotape and then C um, DVDs came into fashion, then it was, it was a plus to have a big story that you could watch all in one sitting or, to set, or over a week or whatever. And um, and so then, but Joe wasn't doing it for uh, commercial reasons. He was doing it because he loved the idea of basically doing a science fiction novel for television. And, uh, and you can see that. I mean, when you watch so many shows, it's very clear that they don't know where they're going, or if they know where they're going, it's, it's stop and start and push and pull. And for instance, the first season of Star Trek Discovery was basically warfare in the writer's room. And you can feel that in the plotting because um, it'll start to set up something and then it won't pay it off and or it'll set up something very badly or it'll pay it off very badly or it'll just go haywire and that's either because they don't have a plan or the plan they have is not followed so or isn't good whereas Joe had a plan all along he kept from the beginning he said it's a five-year arc and uh, and he said he had you know, this, this massive amount of material Triple, triple encrypted and the writers and the actors didn't know where the story went and blah 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 so um uh so but it's good because when you even when you start watching the first few few episodes of babylon 5 it's very clear he's going somewhere he knows where he's going he has a plan and that's great just like a, a, a good novel has a plan you know they know where they're going you know not always but often so um and the thing about babylon 5 that made it fresh and made it really interesting was the fact that although um, the tropes that he was exploring we had seen a lot in science fiction novels we hadn't seen them in television not in this way and so he named a character after Alfred Bester again a tip of the hat to that very famous science fiction novelist but um, but again he was saying I'm gonna do a novel I'm gonna be something where we foreshadow things where we pay things off in interesting ways and that's exactly exactly what he did and so it was thrilling, and, to, and so that now, now I'm watching it in order, and I'm very much enjoying it. I mean, there are certain things that, I, that don't really reson resonate with me. I, I don't find, find Joe... Let's, let's just say that Joe Straczynski's sense of humor is very different from mine, and so often his jokes, I find them kind of... They kind of thud. <laughs> but that's just me. That's just me. But I love the cast, particularly, you know, I mean, Mira Furlan, Bill Mummy, uh, Peter Jurassic's great. I love, uh, I love um, Jakar, Andreas Katsalas. I mean, just a phenomenal cast. When I wrote for the show, I was aware of that, too. And in Space Command now, you know, of course, we're working with Box Leitner, Bruce Box Leitner, and Mira Furlan, and Bill Mumy. And it's a thrill. And, I'm, I, and, and I, you know, the more, the merrier. The, the, but, but so, so, again, just watch it on a small screen. You'll find it well worth the time and effort. And, um, and it will deliver in a way that other science fiction shows, particularly of the past, don't. And, uh, and then in terms of The Expanse, Watching the second and third season, then you go back and you see how well made the first season really is. And what seemed confusing in the, in the first season uh, isn't. So, so one way to actually watch the show is watch seasons two and three and then go back and watch season one. And uh, you, you'll be well rewarded. Again, the show has great visual effects, wonderful um, uh, you know, acting. Uh, I mean, some of the actors are a little flatter than I'd like, but some of them are great. And, um, and the writing's good. And it also knows where it's going because it's based on a series of novels. So there's a plan. 
and that's very very important so anyway so that's it for now uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, there's a patreon account you can throw a little money out to keep mr. sci-fi going um, my birthday is on uh, Sunday Elaine's birthday is today we combine our ages we're well, right now we're 137 and on Sunday we'll be 138 <laughs> so happy birthday to Elaine happy birthday to me and happy birthday to all of you whenever your birthdays are and we'll talk again really soon bye guys <laughs>